Hi mystery writers, welcome to Write a Killer Mystery, where we learn to make a good mystery great. Today we're going to look at six ways to make your protagonist jump off the page to engage your readers. We're looking at, is your protagonist a type or a character? All right, before we start, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon for their continued support. And if you would like to support this series and my writing, there's a link in the description below where you can join us and I have special goodies just for patrons. All right, so is your mystery protagonist a type or a character? I want to give some background. If you're writing to market, mysteries are a high selling category on the large digital book marketing space, Amazon, and just about everywhere else. All right. Uh, you want your mystery protagonist to appeal to your genre readers. That's for sure. And you want a type of detective to fit your mystery subgenre. Um, Klytics, which analyzes um, the market on on Amazon, says the mystery thriller and suspense category has grown to be the second highest selling bestseller list on Amazon Kindle, and our recent research suggests a further upward trend. So you're right in space. And they go on to say mystery thriller and suspense is a big and competitive genre. There are more than 500,000 English titles on Kindle and the influx of new books seems unstoppable. So you're in a great marketplace if you're writing mysteries. And within that large category, mystery may, remains a very strong category after suspense and thriller. So suspense is number one, thriller number two, mystery number three. Um, but those are huge markets. So the market for your mystery is strong. But to keep your reader enthralled, your protagonist needs to be more than just a, a detective type. So let's look at what type of detective your hero or heroine is. Within the category of mystery, you'll find a number of subgenres. Uh, so a quick glance at Amazon gives you amateur sleuths, mystery anthologies, black and African American mysteries, cozy mysteries, hard-boiled mysteries, historical mystery, international mystery and crime. Police procedurals, private investigator mysteries, supernatural mysteries, traditional detective mysteries, and women's sleuths. So, quite a number of subgenres. So you, as a writer, probably have a good idea of your detective's type. Amateur, hard-boiled, police, private investigator, etc. And if you've read in your genre... You have an idea of what readers in your subgenre expect in your type of detective. But there's a challenge for you as an author, and that is to go beyond the type to create a three dimensional character. So let's look at some ways to make your character jump off the page as a three dimensional character. Readers engage with characters who have a personality, and it doesn't matter what color their hair is or how tall they are. Their personality with their strengths and weaknesses and quirks and likes and dislikes uh, brings them to life on the page. Uh, characters all good or all bad won't feel human to a reader, so you don't want your protagonist sleuth to be all good, all right? Uh, those are one-dimensional characters, and they're flat and the opposite of three-dimensional characters. And your reader has no emotional conne connection with a one-dimensional character. 
They don't have all those little traits and quirks and weaknesses that help your reader emotionally connect to your character. So if you have a one-dimensional all-good sleuth, um, your reader has no feeling uh, one way or the other about the character's success or failure. And that means they are engaged in your story. So having a three-dimensional character is just so important to get your readers feeling and caring about your character. Creating characters filled with humanity requires you, the writer, to know more than you're going to show on the page. You'll know how your character reacts under pressure or when they're relaxed. You'll know how they speak and act. And as you write your scenes, you'll know how your characters will act in any situation because you really understand your character. And you pull out all those bits and pieces of their character background so they speak and act realistically, like a real human being, all right? So building that character background, you may not use all the information that you put in there, but it's important for you to know your character because as you write your story, um, you'll know which piece, which detail about your character to use in that particular scene. If you haven't done your background work, you won't know, all right? So you need to know your character physically, emotionally, and socially. You need to know them essentially as a human being. All right, so let's look at some of the ways you can um, fill out that character background. One is the character information. You understand how your character interacts with characters and how their flaws hold them back and how their flaws create conflict. And the time you spend creating details and background for your character helps you understand how they work. Um, details bring the, your character to life. So you're going to concentrate on the details. So one of the things you can do is use habits and mannerisms. What are the things that are unique to your character? Um, they help your reader connect with your character. Your reader has habits and mannerisms and understands how your character has them as a human being. In other words, they don't have to be the same habits and mannerisms your reader has, but your reader understands the concept of these habits and mannerisms that are unique to your character because it makes them feel like another human being. Um, and also, within that habits and mannerisms, you can include things like speech patterns or favorite sayings that they have, um, repeated phrases that reveal how they respond to events. Another way that you can help your reader understand your character is your protagonist interaction with other characters. So how a character reacts to other characters reveals their personality. And when they pat someone on the back or avoid someone on the street, you give your reader clues about that relationship. And, and you reveal your protagonist's character through their interactions with other characters. So keep that in mind. Keep them interacting with those other characters. So it helps your reader make a connection with them. Because don't forget, your protagonist, your sleuth, is the, is the character that leads your reader through the discovery process of the mystery. So it's really important that they connect with your sleuth. Another thing that's really important for you to know and to display in your story is your protagonist's conflict responses. How do they act? How do they react 
when they're under pressure, right? Um, you know, are they braver than your reader? Are they more intellectual? Are they quick-witted? What what do they do when when something throws them for a loop for the moment? All right, and your reader wants to see how your character gets out of every tight situation. So, uh, first of all, you want those tight situations, those conflict episodes in your story. And more importantly, you want to reveal how your character responds to those conflicts. All right. And then you, your character backstory. In other words, your character's a full-grown human being when the story starts. But they don't arrive at the story as a blank slate. There's a whole life that happened before they ever entered your story. And you need to know that life. How much you reveal in your story is up to you. You definitely want to keep any elements of backstory as something that moves the story, your mystery. You want to move your mystery forward. So... Um, I know a lot about your character's background, back backstory, but use it lightly in your story. Your just remember your backstory, like any other element, must move the story forward. Okay, and then along with the habits and mannerisms, you want to know the strengths and weaknesses of your character. They are the backbone of your character's humanity. Contrasts add dimension to your character, and you'll take your character from flat to interesting by contrasting their vulnerabilities and their strengths. So show the reader their skills and also show them the flaws. Show them how they make mistakes. Show them how they aren't quite up to the task at any given moment, right? And the best way to show the facets of that character is to bring them up as the character meets various obst obstacles in the story. Um, one of the things that happens with beginning writers is they start telling the reader he does this or she has that or... Don't try to avoid that. Just bring up those weaknesses and strengths as they are important to the action in the story. All right, so you're showing the weaknesses and strengths, not telling the reader he does this or he always that. All right. So essentially, your detective is the star of your story and you want to make them real. And if you get nothing else from this little episode today, that's it. Work on making your character a real person. No matter what type of subgenre sub you're writing, whether they're lighthearted, cozy um, detective or a hard-boiled noir detective, make them unique. All right, that's it for today. I want to thank you. I, I hope that helps. Um, and if you are just starting writing mysteries, um, I have a course, Write a Killer Mystery, that walks you through the whole mystery creation process from start to finish and guides you along uh, wherever you are in the process of writing the mystery. And there's a link in the description below. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep writing. <laughs>